Hello everybody! Sorry for a delay on new stuff. I'm uh, smidgen behind, but I'm working. <laughs> stuff is a coming. But anyways, I want to make a follow-up video to the last video that I posted on Strawberry Milk slash Aggie slash Unicorn Princess or however you say it. I'm one of those people who believes, or <laughs> wants to believe rather, that somewhere inside everyone there's good intentions. But I see things that make me go, hmm, pst. makes me an extra large uncomfy with the side of fries. As you may or may not have noticed, I made an entire group of people mad with my last video and at first it seemed like a not so great crowd of people but one little bright voice reached out to inform me on something pertaining to the topic and uh, it was not only very eye-opening to me but it felt that it was just as important if not more important than what I was saying in my last video. So my friends out there watching and perhaps those who aren't friends watching I would really like to share this perspective and also uh, apologize perhaps. Alright, so as with the last video, the subject matter in this can be a bit rough. I tried to be lighthearted and funny in the last one to kind of alleviate the heaviness a bit, but I don't think I'm going exactly the same route this time. But of course, viewer discretion advised, this video contains conversations of abuse, sexual misconduct, and the former but involving children. Also, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, but none of those things. And if I say something that sounds like I'm trying to make claims previously, those are 100% my speculation. I'm not a credible source. Do not take me as a credible source. Alrighty, so today's topic. I made a video about a trans artist who made comics illustrating their trauma or other personal griefs, but the problem lies in what we interpret to be children. And here's the big misstep on my part. So I started saying to viewers that they are more than welcome to send me video suggestions, which started out fine, but then I started getting subjects kind of similar to this one, you know, like Dolly Guts and the one that I just did, and other <laughs> artists who do risky things, so to speak. The thing is, I'm not on a personal level very passionate about those people specifically, but I think it's interesting to show what they have done before that's so no noteworthy to everyone and discuss it. I try to inject opinions to make the video more personal and not like I'm just echoing what I've read slash heard, or try to even peek at other perspectives. I do think to a degree it's kind of fun to talk about, but I started getting more requests of questionable people, some that I haven't taken up or at least not yet, or to be the taking up but wasn't really sure, and with each new suggestion the things that I'm shown just goes off the rails getting more and more questionable and just <laughs> out of my reach and most of them have something to do with like mental health or like pay to pay type of stuff and I'm gonna be real I hit a point of starting to feel genuinely uncomfortable like my channel is still relatively new in terms of me posting these like speed paint commentary thingamabobbers and literally a couple of months ago I was thanking everyone for a thousand subs for these videos talking about concepts on these other artists have done really well and of course when those sorts of things happen you feel almost obliged to keep going in that direction but I'm gonna be real honest after Aggie's video and the additional topic requests I got I don't exactly want to be like the artist pedo buster of YouTube I I don't think it's my place or I don't think that I would I don't know, I don't think it's really my my thing to do. But of course, I don't mind you guys sending me suggestions, and if you came to me in my inbox with your topics and receipts and what have you, no worries, like, no hard feelings. Sometimes I haven't gotten the opportunity to respond yet, and your suggestion stays private. I'm not sharing what you said. I do appreciate it. Like, it's not anyone else's fault I started doing these video topics, like, it's my own decision. But I want to bring this up because I, I feel kind of <laughs> caught in a little pickle, because in some ways I'm uncomfy, but in some ways I find it enjoyable. I'm not exactly sure where I stand with them, but I suppose at the moment I'm trying to reevaluate. I guess I'm still trying to find my place with things, like what I want to do, what I want to make, and make stuff that's enjoyable for others to listen to. But here's the thing, I really don't want to create stuff if it's going to make someone feel like I'm intentionally hurting them. Like, it's one thing to talk about something when someone is definitely somehow in the wrong, but I don't really
really feel good about making something if someone is going to suffer by me making it. And while the Aggie video was just a casual suggestion by a friend and I thought I would make it just real fast to be funny and you know talk about a tough topic, I realized that there was a crowd of people I could have hurt and they weren't pedophiles. Same goes with the Dolly Guts video so I wanted to talk about that today. So somebody made a post on Twitter going after me after the video I had made on Aggie. Which I mean, <laughs> it isn't a big deal because no matter what you say, what you do, there's going to be someone who disagrees with you, right? Someone out there will hate you no matter what you say. Even if there's a large crowd of people, there's always two sides to every coin. So I wasn't too bothered by it. In the past, it used to be very flighty and if even one person farted even one molecule of being upset with me, I would immediately change my mind to suit them. But nowadays, I'm trying to stand my ground a bit more, but also at the same time, I don't want to be like stuck up or stubborn and when there's perhaps something that I just don't see. I don't want to be blind to something, you know what I'm saying? So the person who made the post, I believe, was willing to reach out to me and show me this doc and it had these resources from therapists and perspectives from CSA survivors, but I will get back to that one in a second. Let's talk about the video I made. So I was grossed out, upset, fearful. Like, I've seen the MAP or MAP communities, whatever you call them, how they try to make excuses and reasonings for why they do what they do or why they fetishize what they do. And that's what I thought I was seeing. I did read the Puppy Milk comic. And it was obvious to me that there was, you know, a tone centered around fear and trauma, but I found some of the illustrations that they made, like, you know, the genitals to be kind of crossing a line and stepping out of trauma or into fetish art. There were interactions I saw to the comic that didn't seem like victims finding media they could relate to. It seemed more just like maps justifying themselves. And trust me, my mind has not changed on maps or pedophiles themselves, but in this specific video, I want to talk about trauma art. There were also comics and doodles that didn't seem like trauma art that Aggie made and like the tweets likes that also reflected some not so great behavior. So when I replied on Twitter, that's what I was seeing, right? I saw someone partaking in mortifying behavior and I couldn't understand why anybody would support that unless, you know, they themselves are kind of into kitty porn or something. And most people responding like weren't really <laughs> seeming like they had all their nuts and bolts screwed in tightly. You know, it, it, it was hard to take any amount seriously, like, it, you know, when people are just trolling or acting a fool, like you do, you know, on social media, so I wasn't trying to take it too seriously. <laughs> But I was confused because people started going through my likes on Twitter and calling me a hit hypocrite and what have you. <laughs> I was like, alright, that's hell of a stretch and definitely out of touch with reality, so I'm not gonna expend my time on these people. They're having like a field day with each other, like quote unquote dunking on me. <laughs> Like, yuck, yuck, I can't believe she didn't know Rem's a minor, big yikes, you know, stuff like that. And like, just partaking in this with each other and I'm just off to the side, just sitting there like, Sir, I, uh, sir, I never, sir? <laughs> So it's like, so tension machine broke, ran out. We don't have the attention here for you, sir. But a few days later, I wondered like, there's no way those people like seriously feel that way, right? Because my video on Aggie was like drawing fully exposed children's like genitalia, taking part in like adult acts. But they took a screenshot of a picture I like from one of my favorite artists trying to clown on me because there's cleavage. And I was like, y'all. <laughs> but I gave benefit of a doubt and reread my tweet. <laughs> Realize I said like, don't sexualize minors very vaguely, right? And it also reads very smugly. And that's when I was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> like they can't read into my mind and see exactly what I meant by that. And just off the cuff, it does sound hypocritical, which is fair. But if anybody is like digging for context, so that artist, Ayami, Ayami, is one of my favorite artists and she actually inspired me a lot with her illustrations of Rem, like more particularly how she draws hair. And I have drawn Rem twice because of this artist. <laughs> I really, really love how she draws Rem's hair. There's also a pic of a VTuber that was screenshot that she drew, that she designed. She also designed another VTuber, Mel. And I just, I really love her style. But the real kicker, I don't know what it is, but I switched in a full like boomer mode, like embarrassingly. I've never had that many notice in my inbox and like couldn't keep up with it all. And some people didn't pick up like on my tone and replies and it got to the point, point where it was like really cringy on my part. <laughs> so y'all, I had to turn my notice off because I could not keep up with it. But I'm glad you guys are passionate. <laughs> 
And also please note, like, I, I don't mean harm. Like, I'm not mad, I'm, I'm not hurt, you know? I don't mean ill will towards anybody. <laughs> but enough of that. I need to talk about the most important thing here. I got some things wrong and I think it's important to share that. I won't delete the first vid that I made because I do think that this transition from one perspective to the other is important and I won't monetize this video. <laughs> Funnily enough, someone was like saying something about like clout for me monetizing that last one, right? And even though I've been monetized for maybe like what, three months? I knew since the beginning, somebody at some point was gonna say that no matter what I did, something was monetized, it was gonna be leveraged against me. It is what it is. I think it's dumb, but I do understand exactly why people feel that way and it's it's definitely fair. It's absolutely fair to feel that way. And I want to further illustrate how important I feel the topic is by not monetizing it for that reason. So throughout the goofs on Twitter and some pretty horrifying things that people were trying to show me on purpose for shock value or what have you, there was this one voice who spoke up and was very serious but kind and linked me a doc like mentioned before. And at first I was skeptical, I'll be honest, because no one else appears to have genuinely good intentions from what I saw, right? So I read the doc and I took my time with it, made sure I understood it. Took away that grain of salt if I needed it. And even though the subject matter can in and of itself is a bit rough, I was enveloped in a warm feeling. I felt almost tingly and good. <laughs> Which sounds weird, but reason being, there are many people out here doing things with good intentions. Like, not all of these people are bad. Maybe none of them are bad. I don't know for sure, but it's extremely relieving that there is some light in this dark situation. But also, I was very grateful that someone took the time out of their day to show me something and expose me to an entire world and perspective I didn't even know existed. And of course, the, she and anybody else in this like group of people affected by this didn't have to do that, so that was magical. <laughs> and guys, I'm gonna be real, I felt bad. Like, genuinely bad. So hear me out. The Aggie video has a primarily positive response. Most people agree with what I was saying, but I was mortified and realized that it is important that I clear up with this new perspective. I learned more so what trauma art really is. <laughs> Trauma art can trigger victims. Any therapy has the potential to re-trigger victims, but there is comfort in some trauma art that I didn't know existed, but once explained to me, makes perfect sense. When someone goes through something as tragic as assault or rape, there is a possibility that they will explore those things through fiction. It may seem counterintuitive, but they may do so because it gives them the ability to navigate those tough situations in a manner where they are comfortable, it's fictitious, and they can regain power over situations. That's the thing with a lot of these scenarios, it does a lot with power. Power is taken away from them, control is taken away from them, and with rape victims who actually end up having a kink with rape and roleplay it, they get to explore the situation in a safe environment where ultimately they have control. They can then rewrite those tragic feelings with less shame, less guilt, and the like. And this is something backed by therapists or what have you. What I found very important to have been told is that these people have a healthy distinction between fiction and reality. So they can maybe explore these dark things and say a fan fiction where they know it isn't real and at the end of the day they can close the page, close the tab, whatever, and know that life goes on safely. But what does this have to do with cheese pizza, you might say? Or just child art in general? So the same could be said for the CSA victims. They are doing the same thing, where they're exploring these horrifying memories in an environment where they can regain control and understand that this is all fiction. And with Aggie's comics, I can now see where a lot of that lies. So I was mostly upset because even if it's trauma art, the drawing of the genitalia is unnecessary. That's how it felt. I found, I found that with Aggie's puppy, female comic like there's definitely elements of gender dysphoria in there like even before i made the video like i could tell but i now understand the context of Aggie's comic these comics illustrate an absolutely god-awful tragedy unfairly bestowed upon her along with the conflicting feelings of being disgusted for yourself because of gender dysphoria i realize now that Aggie draws the beans as a means to accept that they are not disgusting for what they were and what they went through i will go back to Aggie's stuff 
more here in a second, but I want to continue with the trauma art just a bit more. I have made claims that like these things shouldn't be public, just out in the open because it might harm people, but saying things like that further perpetuates the shame and guilt these people already feel. Saying that they can't post online is like saying that they are shameful and wrong or for the awful things that they go through, that they had go through, and their own personal methods for handling their trauma in a way that benefits them. Saying they can't post these things online is like saying that they're shameful and wrong for that, and that they're shameful and wrong for handling their trauma in a way that actually helps them. Of course I was worried how this would harm others, right? But I realized, like, y'all, I was wrong. Like with the Dolly Guts video and all that, I took a look after myself after saying those things that I did and reading that I did and I, I feel absolutely awful. Like not only have these people gone through some of the worst things on this planet, but <laughs> some dingleberry with an unformed opinion sat here on the internet and told them that they're even more wrong. I said that Aggie's art felt gross, but learning that made me feel even grosser. I don't like the idea that maybe someone genuinely copes in this sort of way, and here I am on the internet making claims that's dangerously close to calling them a pedo, or further illustrating that yeah, they should feel ashamed. Absolutely not. I also have realized something rather hypocritical of myself that I haven't personally seen anyone else bring up, but I will. And here I have been ultimately having this stance of draw whatever you want, who cares, and you know, like it's just a drawing, and do what you want as long as it doesn't harm others. But yeah, I crossed a little too far over the line in some of these past couple videos. Like, I cannot tell people what they can and cannot post. That's not my place. I still do think that things like these should have like trigger warnings or spoilers or whatever, so those who are sensitive to these things or may be triggered are still safe, but other victims who want to find similar art to find souls with can still find those things. Of course, I mean well. Most of us do, on either side here. We think that stuff like this gives a platform to pedos, which I hate with all my being, but victims not having a platform, I think is a bigger problem than a pedos having a platform. I realize that art like that does have its place on the internet, and we can't control if someone with ill intentions is going to seek and interact with those pieces in ways they weren't intended to. It's gonna happen whether we like it or not, and that of course doesn't make it okay. I just think if we see it, got purged that shit. But it's more important that these CSA survivors have their safe place. So going back to Aggie, I understand now that a lot of their art is trauma art. I didn't think so before. She is coping with some unspeakable things, gender dysphoria, etc, and it's a whole world. I couldn't dare to even begin to understand how difficult it is. There's probably much more to be said that I couldn't even fit in this video, but it changed my mind on some things for sure, and looking back, I don't think they should be stopped from drawing what they do entirely. Maybe censoring the bits and pieces? I don't know. I'm not sure. What I'm not letting slide, however, is her blaming her accounts being banned or what have you on her being transgender. So in the last video I spent entirely too long reading those like pedophilia laws and what have you, right? But reason being is I wanted to illustrate that even the possibility of those things is a dangerous line for companies to walk and that's probably why they terminated her stuff. I don't know of course but you know. And of course if you're a genuine pedo, being a male to female trans does not nullify that. I also understand now that age play, you know, can pertain to trauma and I'll let the uwu speech post slide with that, the Powerpuff Girl one and they're like, still yikers, just a smidge. And like some of their takes, of course, I still personally don't align with, right? But here's my takeaway from all of this. Sometimes we think we're doing the right thing, but we're being more harmful on accident. That's why I'm incredibly thankful for the girl who sent the doc link, which was intended to be an open letter to Creepshow Art when they did their video on Aggie a couple months ago. But the thing is, she came at me with no aggression, no disrespect, and was fully willing to introduce me to all this. And that's, that's all it takes. She showed me that I was walking a dangerous line and I'm incredibly thankful for her showing me. I felt some warm and thankful for her and knowing these people have good intentions. But like I said, I felt mortified that what I thought as being the right thing could have done actual harm to someone. So sure, maybe there could have been a couple thousand who enjoyed what I posted and agreed with me, but even the thought of one person seeing that video and feeling awful about themselves made me want to delete it. I sincerely do not want anyone, especially someone 
person who has already suffered to suffer at my hands. For that, I apologize. I also don't want to be like cowardly. I don't want to like run away from the situation if that makes sense. So the video is staying up and I want the progression of my thoughts and feelings to be visible. I feel I've made a mistake. So if you are someone who has been hurt by anything that I've said, my intentions are not to hurt you. I do not deserve anyone's forgiveness and I won't even ask for it, but I do want to put this out there because I think it's important for others to see this too. So perhaps someone might watch this, see the other side of things, and that's one less person hurting someone else unintentionally. If I have an audience of impressionable people, I want that audience to know that we do not stand hurting people in this house. I also want to express my deepest thanks to anybody who calls me out on my shit. Like, there's always gonna be critiques on everything I do, someone's always gonna disagree, but it's good to know if I'm genuinely wrong about something. And it's good to see other perspectives of things, and I always invite those willing to have civil conversations to do so. Again, thank you to the girl who DM'd me the doc. I'll ask permission if I could leak the doc in this video description so that the rest of you can be informed as well. But if she determines that linking isn't okay, I'm going to respect that decision. Thanks to those who have watched. I hope, I really do hope I've made some sort of beneficial change. Who knows? <laughs> but thank you for your patience and stay safe, stay healthy. Black Lives Matter. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye!